Kumba, I respectfully disagree podcast episode one forty three. Today, man, <sighs> NBA. I'm not gonna go all the way in because uh, I got a few people that want to uh, talk about the playoff matchups or whatever. We're waiting on the games tomorrow night, uh, which will be uh, Chicago Bulls versus. Miami Heat, and then we got Minnesota Timberwolves versus Oklahoma City Thunder. But I want to talk about the Pelicans Thunder's game last night, and the elephant in the room, and I hate to put it that way, no shots at Zion, but um. Zion didn't play, and in my opinion, I feel like he was fully capable. If he could have given them 15 to 20 minutes, uh, I feel like that might have been the difference in that game. So today's topic is going to be, is Zion robbing the New Orleans Pelicans? Do you agree or disagree? So... Before we even get started with that, I want to send my condolences to all of the family members, friends, and anybody that was impacted by the events that took place here in Louisville this week. Um, As many know, there was a mass shooting, Uh, not going to give out this young man's name or anything like that. But um, this one hits home. Hits home in in more ways than one because literally that happened not even 10 miles from where I'm recording this at, 15 miles max. Not only that, where I work at, it's two blocks down. Um, prior to COVID, we used to have to park in that parking lot right there on that corner where that bank is. So for plenty of years, I've had to get up, get ready for work, go park and walk right across that, that very building. So it's one of those things where. We were sitting here working, like I said, unfortunately, you know, with COVID, everything has been moved to uh, work from home. So I've been working from home now for the last three years. But it's like, you know, we're sitting here and of course, you know, we all have uh, instant messenger or Microsoft Teams or whatever. So we're able to communicate with each other while we're working. And somebody expressed that there was a mass shooting going on report it downtown so the first thing i do is you know i jump on social media i don't see anybody post or anything about it so i just put it out there because of course you know i didn't want to start any rumors or things like that so i'm like please stay away from the downtown area there is a rumor that there is a active shooter you know what i'm saying like it's sad that this is what society has come down to where it's like you have to get online and warn people and you would hope that that's the fastest method to get your point across or to reach people. So it's just one of them things where it's like, all right, everybody's commuting back and forth to work. Kids are getting ready for school. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot going on at that time of the morning. And by the time, you know, about five or 10 minutes after that, that's when everything just started happening. The news, you know what I'm saying? Like they're finally catching wind of it. They're reporting it. And I just kind of went numb because I'm saying to myself, like, literally, like, this is right downtown where for years, you know, I had to walk that very block. And it's like, how many people were getting up, getting ready for work? And you just walk out of the house thinking that it's your typical Monday morning, uh, day after Easter, on top of it, 
And you're just going into work, bro. And it's like you, you, you never know what can happen. And I understand you're not supposed to live in fear and things like that. But it's like that is part of the reason why I just have no desire to be in large crowds of people anymore. I don't like being out like I just I don't know, man. It's just like I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. But like I said, it's a tragic event. It's unfortunate. And I've made several episodes talking about gun control and things of that nature and again man this ain't the conversation for that like i'm tired of it I'm sure other people are tired of it it's it's a broken record at this point and i'm i'm just going to apologize ahead of time because i'm like i you're not going to make sense of that to me like there's no justification for why people should be able to walk into a store and purchase automatic weapons and things of that nature and of course not a gun owner i don't know much about them so for people that want to break down oh well this kind of gun is this and it's like screw all that man like innocent people lost their lives because of one individual and i will say this and i'm gonna leave it alone it's so heartbreaking watching the coverage of it all because it's like now it's almost a everybody has more empathy for the shooter in my opinion it's like you see all of these articles and things and everybody's painting this picture oh he was a a stellar athlete and he never harmed anybody never done this never done that and it's like you're you're reporting this as if you're trying to maintain his innocence like he like oh my god how could this happen like something mentally had to happen he suffered so many concussions to where he had to play basketball with a helmet on or padded whatever on and it's like why are we not talking about how selfish of an act that was like supposedly he was informed that uh, he was going to be laid off or, you know, his services were no longer needed. So this was a retaliation in a sense. But it's like, come on, man, like this, this happens every day. Hell, my job is giving me some news that uh, I don't necessarily like or it leaves me wondering what's going to happen in the near future. That's neither here nor there, but it's like, bro, you just got to take it and, and, and make the best of the situation, man. And it's like, that doesn't justify going downtown, shooting, killing, and injuring, and putting everybody's lives at risk because of not being able to handle the real world. But it's just like, man, you just look at the coverage, bro, and you look at how they – portrayed Trayvon Martin Mike Brown it's like you criminalize those people and they were actual victims you know what I'm saying like they were murdered but you found a way to criminalize to where the general public didn't have any kind of feeling of empathy remorse or anything for what happened to them it was almost like well he shouldn't have went in the store and done this and done that he he must have been up to no good so it's justified these people losing their lives. But then in this case, the actual perpetrator, oh, he went through several concussions. He went through this. He went through that. And it's like everywhere I look on my social media, it's like everybody like, oh, my God, I feel so bad. I went to school with him. I went to this with him. And that, and it's like <sighs> typical day in America is how I'm going to chalk it up. And I'm going to leave it alone because, like I said, it's just it's unfortunate. But the older I get, the more I, I, I see the world for how it really is. And it's just one of those things where it's like, bro, you just got to learn to adapt, learn to adapt and maneuver the best way you know how. Try to be a model citizen and role model for your kids, your family and keep it pushing. That's it. But um, back to this zion thing man 
and it's un it's 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 not fair to him. It's not fair to him in regards to how all of this is playing out. But at the same token, it's like you still got to have some kind of accountability. Like, in my opinion, you all can agree or disagree, but I feel like Zion is the perfect example of a product of the Internet. We all knew about Zion when he was in the eighth, ninth grade, spectacular dunker, leaping abilities, quick jumping. You knew the athleticism was there. And he became an overnight sensation. And you just knew he was going to be a beast. Because first of all, the kids he was playing in high school was inferior, like I don't know what. And it was almost too easy. So then the hype carried over. Everybody's excited. He went to Duke. Him and R.J. Barrett, like, you set this bar. You just kept setting this bar. And even then, it's like, all right, that's when the questions started coming. Like, all right, man, this dude kind of kind of heavy set. Kind of look like me in a sense. <laughs> 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 I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Big boy season. Uh, of course, I couldn't jump like that. So, uh, shout out to the to the Husky team, but it was like, you know, dude this size, jumping that high, getting off the floor so quick, like you've never really seen that before. So you would think it's like, okay, gearing up for the NBA, you're going to have to lose some of that weight. Like everybody kept saying, you got to lose some of this weight, lose some of this weight. He goes number one, he's drafted to the Pelicans. New Orleans, by far, one of the worst places that he could have went in terms of unhealthy eating. Excuse me. He's got access to all types of stuff, gumbo, shrimp, crawfish, everything. He's got access to it. But that's where the discipline comes in at. So it's like, okay, boom, he gets injured. Comes back, boom, he gets injured. Boom, he's, I'm like, okay, now, wait a minute now. You having surgeries, you your knees, you this, you that, and every, the whole thing is your weight. And like I've told people before, it's like, come on, bro, you talking about a 19, 20 year old kid at the time. There's no reason with the technology, the equipment, trainers, and everything that we have now, there's no excuse for that other than you just don't care. Like you don't have the desire to be in shape. And that's where I'm finna hit the button. I disagree. Because I think he could have played last night. Like, I, he should not have sat out. They are showing clips of him doing drills, dunking, and I think that's where he made his mistake at, bro. Like, if you're able to get up and down and jump, then come on, man. Give your team 15 good minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all we ask. Just your presence. Like, you ain't even got to do much. Just your presence out there, you become a threat to where you just create some more space for other people. And guess what? If y'all get in, that buys you more time to rest up, try to get healthy, ease your way back into that. Because he's the one who came out and said, physically, I feel fine. The doctors have cleared me to play, but until I feel like Zion, I don't want to go out there. What? <laughs> what? What did you just say? Bro's talking in third person until Zion feels like Zion. And it's like, at this point, man, you robbing them folks blind, bro. Like, that's not fair. That's not fair at all. And it's like, to me, when you start having them conversations and people start comparing him to Greg Oden and things like that, I've had several debates with people like, no, he's far from that. Zion is the truth. When he plays, he's putting up, you know, he's shooting 60% from the field. He's averaging 24 or 25. He's doing something like, bro, 
You're only getting a 20 game sample size, man. Like, bro, 80 games is a long season. We don't even know if he has the durability to sustain that. Like, he's only playing in spurts, bro. I was like, man, they give Le- LeBron hell. Oh, here he go with that low management. And I'm like, bro, this man got 20,000 minutes on his on his resume. He have 50,000 minutes. 20 years on his resume. And it's like, he doesn't deserve a break, but we're supposed to give Zion a pass who's under 25 years old. Supposed to be in the best shape of his life. Literally. These are your peak years, bro. And it's like, Imagine if he was, hell, I'll, I'll say 250, bro. If he lost 40 good pounds, he would be a monster, pure monster. But it's like you don't even have the discipline or the will to want to earn your paycheck. And that takes me down a path that I've had with several people. And here's where I'm going I'm going to say it. I'm going to leave it alone. If somebody wants to piggyback off of this conversation, then the door is open. But it's like, that's why I don't necessarily agree with paying all these, these kids, all this money, this NIL and this and that. And it's like, now you're, you're tempering with the, the actual game itself. Because now NCAA is pretty much turned into free agency. You got all these kids leaving, skipping, going to different schools. Um, you got some kids that are eligible to eligible to go pro, and they're like, nah, there's more money that can be made here in college, so I'm going to milk this money as much as I can. I'm going to make more money in college than I would if I went to the NBA or the WNBA, get picked late, first round, second round, no guaranteed contract where as long as I show up in North Carolina, Kentucky, <laughs> just off of NILs, I'm going to bring in six figures easy. And all I got to do is wake up and pretend like I'm going to class. That's a no brainer. But it's like you're paying all of these people for what you think they're going to give you. So with that in mind, there's no incentive to be in shape. There's no incentive to work hard or do what I got to do to get back on the court so I can go to battle with my teammates and let's try to go make a push for a playoff spot. Because before he got hurt, they was one of the best teams in the West. That's the part that I'm talking about. It's like it's an 80 game season, bro. 80 games. That's a long time. You're talking about the end of October to April, bro. That's a long time. So it's like, Teams have learned that we got to pace ourselves. Look at the Golden State Warriors, bro. Like, they just been coasting all year. And I've seen several people that's, like, legit think that they got a chance to repeat. But that comes with being a vet and understanding. I'm not going full throttle right out the gate. It don't matter if we're the number one seed in the West in December. Stay healthy. Be ready to go and compete so you can make a, a playoff run. So that's what I'm saying. Like, dude has had like four months where he could have been eating clean. Even if he did have a severe hamstring injury and he couldn't get up and down and this and that without fearing that he was going to tear it if it wasn't already torn, at least you can eat clean and slim down. Like, bro, like, trust me, (laughs) for somebody like myself that wants to lose weight, I know how hard it is to eat right eat healthy, eat clean. You try your best to do it, but hell, I ain't worth millions of dollars. I don't have access to personal chefs and trainers around the clock and this and that. So guess what? On days where I should be eating salmon and uh, (laughs) grilled chicken and this and that, it's more convenient for me to pull up and get a four for four. I know it sounds like an excuse. Hell, it is an excuse, but guess what? I'm not the one making $200 million. So I know that I lack the discipline or the willpower to do what it is I need to do to get back down to my uh, college year body back when I was out here thriving. Shout out to me. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Back when I was putting in that work, but now I'm married, old, washed, and that comes with the territory. But it's like, come on, man, bro. Like, man, you and you your, your peak years, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, all right, you got the shoe deal already. You got the contract extension already, like, and it's guaranteed money. There's no incentive to work yourself back onto the court. And that's where I feel like these kids today, they don't have the passion to compete. Sports is no longer about competition. It's about how much can I gain from this particular sport until I'm ready to call it quits. It's like you you see the articles and stuff from Tariq Hill talking about he's contemplating retirement. It's like... (laughs) <laughs> he didn't got the money now. There's no incentive to play. We we water down accomplishments. MVPs don't mean nothing anymore. Scoring titles don't mean nothing. None of the personal accolades mean anything because oh, you got to win a ring. You got to win a ring. So if a player's like, I don't I don't think I have the opportunity to win a ring, then I'm gonna collect all these M's and ride off into the sunset. And that's the part I don't agree with. And that's why I said before, it's like, I get it. Everybody's like, nah, man, you need to get your money, get as much money as you can, da, 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 da. But it's like, if that's the case, we can't complain about, oh, the NBA's watered down. They don't play defense no more. They don't. Everybody's out there. They, they got the bag already. What reason would I have to go out there and play hard if I already got the check? It don't go together. But anywho, just wanted to jump on here real quick, throw out some content for this week. Um, Like I said, got a couple topics I want to discuss coming up. Hopefully get a couple people in the building. Um, See what we got for the summer coming up, man. Let's pick some of these playoff matchups and go from there, man. But, of course, got to plug the podcast real quick. Shout out to everybody that has copped a T-shirt. Share that sh. That's the slogan for the summer, man. Share that sh. Um, T-shirts have been doing well. Been getting them sent out. Shout out to Miss Crystal. Hope you don't get mad that I used your name. Hopefully you'll get the courage to come on this podcast one of these days. And uh, let's chop it up. But like I said, uh, kudos to you. Um You've been plugging the podcast out there in Texas and sent a couple orders out there. And you said that uh, you've been putting people on. So hopefully, you know what I'm saying? People are going to engage and throw me some topics, things that y'all like to hear, discuss, relationships. Everything can't always be about sports. So uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. Appreciate to those who uh, have copped a T-shirt, like I said, Reach out to me, whether it's Facebook, Instagram. He'll even jump on the YouTube video, comment under there if you want a shirt. Uh, $20 local, 25 if I got to mail it. Again, the whole purpose of the shirts is just to market the podcast. It's not about the money or anything like that for me. If it was, I'd be out here taxing $40 or 35 this and that. Nah, it ain't about that. Get this podcast out there. I want to get as many eyes and ears so we can have some engagement, chop it up, and have some fun with it. So, again, you too, hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment. Follow me on Instagram, I Respectfully Disagree Podcast. Got the TikTok, IRD underscore podcast. Y'all come rock with your boy, man. Till we meet again, we out. Toasted, yeah. no competition. I'm yeah. I feel so high, I feel so live. My body's in the twine. I'm I feel so live, and I know why that I can't deny. I'm Giddy, fine wine, fools, mock liquor. Wish me I'm high class.